Welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church. We pray that the Word of God will strengthen your faith and that your worship with us will bring joy to your hearts and lives. We are glad to have you join us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve Him as His dear children. But we have disobeyed Him and deserve only His wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to Him and plead for His mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of faith, hope, and love, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The path of eternity is one of two. In their total joy in heaven, or pain and suffering forever in hell. And ultimately, every human will find himself in one situation or, or the other. The way, the only way to eternal life in heaven is through faith in Jesus and his work. First lesson for the 14th Sunday after Pentecost is recorded in the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 66. And I, because of their actions and their imaginations, am about to come and gather all nations and tongues, and they will come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them, and I will send some of those who survive to the nations, to Tarshish, to the Libyans and the Lydians, famous as archers, to Tubal and Greece, and to the distant islands that have not heard of my fame or seen my glory. They will proclaim my glory among the nations, and they will bring all your brothers from all the nations to my holy mountain in Jerusalem as an offering to the Lord. On horses, in chariots and wagons, and on mules and camels, says the Lord, they will bring them as the Israelites bring their grain offerings to the temple of the Lord in ceremonially clean vessels. And I will select some of them also to be priests and Levites, says the Lord, as the new heavens and the new earth that I make will endure before me, declares the Lord, so will your name and your descendants endure. From one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, all mankind will come and bow down before me, says the Lord. And they will go out and look upon the dead bodies of those who rebelled against me. Their worm will not die, nor will their fire be quenched and they will be loathsome to all mankind. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm of the day is Psalm 72. Endow the king with your justice, O God, the royal son with your righteousness. He will defend the afflicted among the people and save the children of the needy. He will endure as long as the sun, as long as the moon through all generations. He will be like rain falling on a mown field, like showers watering the earth. All kings will bow down to him, and all nations will serve him. All nations will be blessed through him, and they will call him blessed. Praise be to the Lord God, who alone does marvelous deeds. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
second lesson is recorded in Hebrews chapter 12, beginning with verse 18. You have come to a mountain that can be touched, and that is burning with fire, to darkness, gloom, and storm, to a trumpet blast, or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further word be spoken to them, because they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear. No, but you have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all men, to the spirits of righteous men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia. Jesus Christ has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Alleluia. The gospel is recorded in Luke chapter 13, beginning with verse 22. Then Jesus went through the towns and villages, teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? He said to them, Make every effort to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you came from. Then you will say, we ate and drank with you, and you taught in our streets. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Away from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping there and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown out. People will come from east and west and north and south, and will take their place at the feast in the kingdom of God. Indeed, there are those who are last who will be first, and first who will be last. This is the gospel of our Lord. We confess the Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God for our meditation is our gospel reading recorded in Luke chapter 13. My dear Christian friends, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? It's an interesting question. What kind of answer would you give? What kind of answers do you think we would get if we posed such a question to the people in our country? According to most of the leading polls, the majority of people in our country, well, they believe in some kind of after afterlife. They don't believe in hell. And if there is a hell, they often rationalize that, well, loving God isn't really going to damn anyone except maybe for, for the very worst. Now, God is often seen as simply a kindly old grandfather who isn't really going to punish anyone. Sin, sin is not taken seriously. Even with any, within many Christian churches, there's a reluctance really to speak about sin. And the thought is, well, as long as I'm not hurting anyone else, no, don't tell me I'm wrong. I, finally, you don't know what's right or wrong for me. And that's the attitude of many in our society. Truth and morals are, are relative. It's what I want it to be. And so I think that if you ask most people in our country, are only a few people going to be saved? I think they'd maybe respond, no, only a few are going to be damned. Well, how did Jesus answer that question? Because Jesus makes it very clear that not everyone is going to get into heaven, even that many will not. But Jesus answers this question really by refocusing this man's question as to what needs to be his chief concern. Not how many will be saved, but how can he be sure of his salvation? How can we be sure of our salvation? And so Jesus uses this opportunity to encourage the crowd there before him, to encourage us to make every effort to enter through the narrow door. Because it is the only door. Now that door is open to all, but it's only open for a time. The door to eternal life, to salvation, is narrow because there's only one way. Jesus is the door. And Jesus tells us, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. And Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That is the only way to enter heaven, through faith in Jesus. There aren't many different ways to get to heaven. All religions are not the same. All roads don't lead to heaven. In our society, it would tell us that what you believe really isn't so important as long as you're sincere in your faith, as long as you're you know, trying to do what is good and right. But faith is only as strong as its object. And God clearly tells us that there's only one Savior, there's only one way to heaven, and that's Jesus. Our salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. And so it doesn't matter how sincere a person is, how good a person is, without faith in Jesus, it's impossible to enter heaven. The door is narrow because it's only by Jesus' work that a person is able to enter heaven. And so those then carrying their self-righteous pride, those relying on their works who, and think that they're good people, such a person can't th fit through that narrow door. A person who focuses on the things of this world and can't enter that narrow door, such a person loaded down with the, the baggage of the treasures and cares of this world, can't squeeze through that door. And so God then gives us his law to cut us down to size. 
Now, God's law reveals the miserable sinners that we are. It shows us clearly how unworthy of heaven we are. That by nature, any effort we might make to get through that door fails. In fact, we aren't able to make any effort as we were by nature. We were dead in transgressions and sin. And so with the baggage and the weight of our sin, we could not get through that door to heaven. And the only way is through Jesus. Jesus opened that door wide for us by becoming our substitute. He was perfect in our place. He paid for our sins by His sacrifice on the cross. He's removed that baggage so that now we can go through that narrow door into heaven. Jesus proved that He has paid for sin, that the door is open when He Himself rose in victory on Easter Sunday morning. And now Jesus encourages us to make every effort to enter through the narrow door. Again, it's through Jesus, but the picture, the encouragement that Jesus gives is much the same as the one that the Apostle Paul uses. When Paul writes, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And the Christian life is pictured as an endurance race or as a, a battle with heaven, the prize, waiting at the finish line. But it is a struggle which requires a great deal of effort on our part because throughout our lives there's a great deal of opposition. Opposition from the devil, from the world, or sinful world around us, from our own sinful flesh. And those enemies would seek to rob us of faith to keep us from entering through that door, closing that door on us. By the working of the Holy Spirit, as He created that faith in us and continues to strengthen that faith, we have the strength and the ability to fight against temptation. We have the strength and ability to overcome the, the devil and the sinful world and our own sinful desires. And so we'll work hard to avoid temptation, to overcome sin. And we're able to do those good works that God has prepared for us to exercise our faith. And it's with the strength that God gives, the ability that He Himself provides. We're able then to make those positive decisions now that affect that faith that the Lord has worked in our hearts. We do that then by taking every opportunity to study His Word, to be strengthened through that Word. Through that word, our eyes are focused back on Jesus and His work. And we need that continual encouragement and strength that comes from God's Word. Otherwise, we very quickly fall back into our sinful self-reliance, looking to our own good works. We so quickly and easily get wrapped up in the things of this world and drift away. Now, the door is narrow. Make every effort to enter through that narrow door by faith in Jesus. Because waiting on the other side of that door are the blessings and joys of heaven. Blessings and joy too glorious really even to be described in direct language. Beyond what our sinful minds can, can fully comprehend. But what a wonderful picture Jesus gives to us here. Jesus pictures heaven as a great feast, a, a place of celebration and joy with countless numbers of guests. Now the door is open to all. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He isn't just the Savior for a certain group of people. He's the Savior of all. And so Jesus pictures the, the Old Testament patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, together with all the prophets, and there at this heavenly feast, they're joined together with people from all corners of the world. And the good news of forgiveness and salvation in Jesus is for everyone. God wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. And so believers will come from all over, from all places, from all ages, from all statures and status, from all races. And the Lord will bring them to take their places there in His kingdom. 
Now that fact may not have sat well with the crowd whom Jesus, first of all, was addressing. If people would come from all corners of the earth, that obviously meant Gentiles as well. People whom the Jews despised. But it's also a reminder for us that, again, the gospel is for all people. Jesus died to open the door for all people, which includes two people that we may be tempted to look down upon. People who maybe we don't particularly care for. People who are different than we are. People who we might consider beneath us. Now, Jesus opened the door to all people, and we then, as his disciples and witnesses, are to loudly and boldly proclaim the gospel to whoever we might have opportunity. This just points out, some of them may still be far from the means of grace. They may not yet know their Savior Jesus. Perhaps they won't hear the gospel until the last moment. If by God's grace the gospel will reach them and they will be among the first. By God's grace they will enter into his eternal joys. And that moves us then to make every effort to be busy proclaiming the gospel. Because while that door is open to all, it's only open for a time. While Jesus' death and resurrection has opened the door to heaven, there are those who will not enter. There are those who will be lost. But God's grace is not without its limit. Like the prophet Isaiah encourages us, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Each individual is given a time of grace after which it's too late. That time of grace is a person's life during which he has opportunity to, to hear God's word and to come to faith and then to serve the Lord. That time of grace ends when a person dies or when Christ returns again in glory. So we need to seek him while we have the opportunity. We don't know when that time of grace may end. Christ could return yet today. Could die in an accident tomorrow. Well, since that time of grace will eventually end, we're encouraged to use it. For once the judge of heaven and earth has closed the door, that time of grace has ended, it will be forever too late. Those who reject it will be left out forever in hell. But Jesus describes the situation for those who are locked out, huh? weeping and gnashing of teeth. In hell, there will be reason for eternal tears. There will be no happiness, only sorrow and suffering. Now where were those individuals when the door was open? Perhaps busy with other things until it was too late. Their focus was on the wrong things. Their priorities were in the wrong place. Their reliance was on something other than Jesus. But what a good reminder for us, too, that we need to be faithful in our use of God's Word. And today, and repentance isn't something to be put off till tomorrow. Time spent with the Lord in His Word isn't something that I do later on. The Lord and His Word need to be a priority for us right now because we don't know when that door might close. Just because I was baptized and confirmed and, and grew up in the church, it doesn't mean that I can rest easy. Just because I know who Jesus is doesn't mean I'm going to be satisfied. Note that just knowing who Jesus is and even being a, you know, a good person isn't enough. The people who were left outside, well, they knew the owner of the house. Well, they even ate and drank with him. Yet they were shut out. The Jews had Jesus right there with them. He taught in their midst. He ate and drank with them. Yet how many rejected Jesus as Savior and were left out of the kingdom? Their relationship to Jesus then was simply an, an external one. Not a close personal relationship. Not a relationship by faith. And that's a warning to us. 
What a temptation to take God's word for granted. To think that we know the Bible, or at least know it well enough. We've had Jesus with us for, for many of us, most if not all of our lives. Through the pages of Scripture, we've eaten and drunk with Jesus. May we never take that relationship with Jesus for granted. Don't let it simply be an external relationship. Instead, in faith, cherish that relationship that you have with Jesus. He is your only Savior from sin. Time with Him will be a priority. Not just when it's convenient or when it doesn't get in the way of more important things. Now, to those who despise God's time of grace and rejected Christ, but Jesus says to them, Away from me, all you evildoers. But Jesus rejects those who rejected him. It wasn't lack of, of good that prompted Jesus call, to call them evildoers. Those people weren't necessarily some terrible criminals doing terribly outward, outward evil acts. But no doubt many of the Jews whom Jesus addressed here, who ultimately rejected him, outwardly appeared to be very good people. In fact, those Pharisees. Jesus once called them a brood of vipers. Outwardly, they were some of the most righteous people. But externals don't save. They're evildoers because they had no righteousness. They were without that robe of Jesus' righteousness. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, they could not do any good works. Well, thanks be to God that Jesus has opened wide the door to his kingdom for us. By faith, God the Holy Spirit has since brought us through that door and made us members of Christ's kingdom. By faith, when our life here on earth has ended, we will take our seat at that feast in heaven. And so may our concern not be how many will be saved, but that we are among those who are saved. And so with that in mind, continue to struggle against sin and temptation. Continue to be faithful in your use of the means of grace, the gospel and word and sacrament. Continue to praise and to serve your Savior by whose death and resurrection that door to heaven does stand open. And make every effort to enter through that narrow door. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, our Maker and Preserver, we praise and thank you for all that you give us day after day. We are not worthy of all the mercies you show us. You have given us your precious word to nourish our souls and to protect us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. We thank you for those who teach and preach your saving truth at this place and everywhere. Grant them a rich measure of patience, wisdom, and love. Heavenly Father, we pray that you shield us from every kind of danger, sudden catastrophe, terrors of crime, and the pain of disease. Watch over those who travel by land, sea, and air. Keep our loved ones from whatever perils may threaten them. Heal those who are sick. Cheer those who are sad. Calm those who are distressed and comfort all who are old and infirm. Bless our land, our people, and those who hold offices of high trust. Keep our government and schools upright and strong for the advancement of good citizenship and useful vocations, that we may enjoy your gifts of peace, security, and well-being. Grant your blessing to every nation on earth. Where there are wars, may there be peace. Where there is hatred, let it be healed. Where there is poverty, danger, or disaster, come with your almighty power to help and restore. We bring these requests before you in the name of Jesus, our Lord, and ask you to hear us. Take all that we have, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our ministries and offerings, and use them to your glory. We give ourselves to you that we may serve you in whatever way is pleasing in your sight. Amen. And we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation and bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.